So social engineering, right? So what is social engineering? Hello, can you all hear me? Yes or no? Very fan of you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear Arish. Uh, uh, it is a broad range of uh, malicious activities uh, that is uh, has been accomplished by the human interactions. Okay, fantastic. Any, 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 anybody else? Oh, you can't. You all can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. How many of you get? Uh, calls right so so who i spoke to mr champion right yes sir yes mr adish okay so 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 what is your uh, date of birth 85 1975 85 1975 and where are you coming from uh, i am working as professor uh, in ojin school of business and technology okay uh, i am from uh, retiri near uh, vinayagaram where in retiri uh okay um so what what is your uh, phone number sir sorry actually uh, your topic is uh, this uh, what is that uh, forensic activities uh, but uh, uh, give you my i9 6602 but uh, if they are asking somebody in banking or uh, sectors or somebody you cannot see because uh, why why did are, you tell uh, me also why did you tell me now also right because, because uh, I, know I know your that, date of uh, birth. I know your date of yeah. birth. I know your phone yeah. number. I temporarily yeah. know your address, right? Okay. Now, what do you think I can do with this information? Yes, uh, because uh, the, this, if I am sharing this type of information, uh, this can be this type of uh, or information is matched with some other uh, uh, banking sector or some other uh, what is a credit uh, anything that will be some uh, in a wrong way, you know. So we could not be able to share this type of information any. Uh, other card information, phone information, uh, that type no, of information no, cannot no, be shared. Sometime back, you uh, you know me or you don't know me, that's different. Okay. Did you even question me saying why I need your date of birth and phone number? And did you even think that there are others on the call? At least uh, if you know about uh, the experience or uh, the person uh, who are attending the session uh, or something, uh, else. Yes, see, this is where there's a small line of difference, right? We, yes. we actually don't draw a line of difference. We, we, we simply trust people, right? We simply yeah. trust people and uh, we just tell them that uh, yes. uh, whatever information we have to share, right? Mm, yes, That's sure. actually not needed at all, correct? Yes, yes, correct. So, so this is what, this is where your social engineering actually starts, right? Mm, yes. It, it starts from anybody. You can't even imagine who's doing a social engineering to you. you can't even, even, even if uh, we have shared uh, all the information in uh, Facebook or uh, Instagram also, it, uh, it leads to some uh, uh, some bad condition. I think so. Some Correct. personal information. Correct. That Correct. leads to, yeah. So, so, this is where social engineering starts. Right? Social engineering mm -hmm. is a human methodology. Where you go talk to people, you, you make them feel comfortable and you ask details from them. I'm just going to put up a small video, see if you can hear this. Okay. Yes, visible, Mr. Arish. Can you also hear the sound? No. Yes, slightly, slightly. Uh, Arish, can you increase the volume? Uh, you're not able to hear properly. Sir, my volume is maximum. I'm just wondering how would I do this? Just a minute. 
or I can just share this link in the chat. I mean, people can actually see this there also. Did you all get the link? Yes. Yes, sir. ரவிஷ் <laughs> 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 Okay, I don't know how many of you followed this. Just have a look at this also. Arish, can you make it a full screen mode at least? so so this is where this is where you know a lot of mistake do happen so probably what you do is you actually go to a, a place who you have never know and and you start sharing your information right and for example like how he pointed out there is so much of information for me in facebook and other places where i can i can find out a lot of things and i can use this information to construct something like this and then talk to you posing to be a bank person or something get more information and then do the hacking so social engineering is a technique which is done before any attack that happens to to understand the person whom you are going to attack much much better and to create an attack in such a way that your attack is going to be more perfect so so if you seen this movie called uh, ambe shivam you would have seen kamala hasan traveling uh, uh, sorry madhavan traveling in a train and yuhi setu will, will come and talk to him wearing coat and stuff so madhavan will believe him and then he gives him biscuits and then loots everything right that's how social engineering happens the call that you get will will sound like it's very very genuine but ultimately the motive of the person whom you are talking to is different 
So there are a lot of methods through which you can do social engineering. One of the method is, you know, first talking in person, right? They come to you. Um, if you go to a mall or something, they come to you. They try to talk to you. And then they try to find out some information by giving you some offers. They ask you to write your phone numbers, your email addresses, right? In some paper or notebook. That's where it all starts. And, and the second aspect is you, you actually uh, uh, get a call from somebody. Somebody impersonates to be some other person. Like Let's say, for example, I'll tell you that I called from a bank. I'm calling you from a bank. And then, and then you, you kind of believe that I'm from a bank. I will tell you certain things because I would, I would have been following what you're doing, right? So for example, if I buy a new phone and post it on social media, right? I'll even, I might even call up and check. Did you pay using the, your credit card for the new phone that you bought? Then you will believe. There are certain yes questions that I'll ask you. I'll ask you questions which will make you say yes. And then you will believe me. And then I'll start putting in some false information to make you believe that also. That's how social engineering actually works, right? So there is no definitive way. There are no security tools for us to stop social engineering attacks. The reason being, these are with humans, right? These are with humans. You and me should be responsible for whatever we are speaking, right? So how much ever you know a person, do not share any information which you feel is completely not necessary for them to know. A lot of insecure practices we do, right? Um, how many of you go by yourself and enter your credit card or debit card pin when you swipe it on a pass system, right? I see a lot of people, they tell the password. If you go to a shop, somebody will say, sir, this machine cannot come there. Then what you need to do is you need to tell him that, okay, I will come there, sir, and put my password. You should not tell your four-digit pin because he could have a skimmer. He will copy your card details and you also tell him the pin and there it goes. So, so through social engineering, he gets access to one of your sensitive information. There are a lot of modus operandi. Anybody can share any experience of any such calls or fraudulent things that happened for you or somebody you know. Anybody would like to share something? Hello. Fine. So, how do you prevent social engineering? Social engineering cannot be prevented by using any tools. Of course, you have these spam blockers, call blockers for you to identify unwanted calls. But again, it's just with us. You have to ensure that you are aware of all these things and you don't respond to such hoax calls. So that's, that's primarily social engineering. So, this can be done directly using humans and there are other ways also to do it. Phishing, right? So I'll show you some sample phishing email IDs. Okay. See, there are a lot of phishing templates that are available. So if you go and see, there are a lot of templates. See, I can create anything like this. There's also a tool which can actually create phishing, sample phishing email IDs. There you go. One second. Okay, I'm just signing up. One second.
Today, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to create um, Okay. See, if I'm just going here, right? I can I can just type anything. Yes. Okay. So see, look at the topics, no? Look at this. So I can send something like this. Uh, this is the email. See, since there have been no documented cases of coronavirus, in the World Health Organization prepared a document necessary preparing to take against the We strongly in mind. So I can just create an email ID like this, and I can I can make you do whatever I want you to do. I'm just going to show you another sample example, right? So see what are the templates? Google Docs. So I can send you an email. Look at this. No, I just told them this is my organization, and look at the from address, reply address, and and uh, see how they are actually creating, right? If I click this password, it it will go to a page where I can give you a flag. This is just a training, right? But what in reality, what will happen is I can set this link to capture all your information. And then once I capture all the information, I can redirect you to a original page, right? So let's, let's just do a small test now. Okay. So this is about it. Okay, it's the next step. So I can add uh, the list of users here. And then the moment I send this, I can even have a long landing page. So I can, I can, there are a lot of options for me for landing page, right? So I can just give them a note saying you click the phishing email or I can do my own program here. And then if I say launch, okay. Done. So you should have get a mail. I sent an email, right, to my own email ID. So just see how it turns out to be here. So it's it's a very easy way to to create. So this is a this is a training tool which I demonstrated. Uh, easier ways for you to create phishing email address with a lot of templates, which can be genuinely done, right? So phishing is another way of social engineering. I can I can ask you to give you any information by sending you a mail. So these emails can either be threatening for you or it could be enticing for you to click that. I, I can either offer you money or I can tell your account has been stolen. Either ways, you will actually you will actually do that, right? Right? So so that's that's it.
So, so social engineering can be performed in different ways. Uh, fishing, wishing, right? General talking. Only way to avoid this is to be aware of what's happening and to not tell your information. This is about social engineering. Now let's go into another topic <clears throat> called email investigations. Now email investigations are predominantly done when you want to trace or when you want to find out more information about an email that has come to you. Sometimes you get a suspicious message. Sometimes you can get a message which is phishing, but they would have swindled money. So there are various ways to investigate an email, right? One, see, there are two dimensions to it, right? I'll tell you one investigation. And then the second thing I'll talk about monitoring. How do you monitor emails and what, what kind of email monitoring can be done? Now, first is investigation. Okay. So let's take the sample email address. I'm opening an email address. The very first thing when I look at this, I, I kind of get to know who has sent this email, right? Let's say this is a suspicious email ID. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the properties and you see something called as email address here. I'm just going to select all, copy this. And there are, there are tools in the internet where you can just go and, and just paste this information. So I just put email address. Now here is another tool. Okay. I just have to paste my email header here. Okay. Analyze header. You see that it gives me a lot of information here. So it, it shows where the IP address coming from, right? It shows me all the details and it can give me a lot of information. Okay. I can just use this. I can, I can find out through which channels it is coming, right? From where it is coming, see, origin, date, who sent it, where this is go and replay to, right? And this is the analysis here, right? And also giving me a list of checking where if this IP has been blacklisted. So these are the various IPs through which this email has come to me. If you look at this again, there's another email ID which I which I just had. The IDs. I see a blacklist here, right? So if I click here, I know from where this is getting blacklisted. See? So this I this particular IP, right? <clears throat> this particular IP was blacklisted in one of the uh, security rule sets. So then if there are more number of blacklists, then I know for sure that this particular uh, uh, email is from a suspected spammer or something. So one email address lookup can actually give me a lot of information. Okay. So, so this is a email signature analysis. So this is one way of doing this. Now, one of the next important questions is, if I get an email, let's say if I get an attachment, or if I get a link in the email, how can I know that this link is safe for me to access? Let's again go here. So I just want to check if this link is safer or not for me to click, okay? I just copied this link which, come, which came in one of my emails. You see the website called VirusTotal, VirusTotal.com. Just go to URL and paste this URL and give search button. Do you see the results? So if I get an email, if I have a URL in that, when I have to find out if this URL is safe for me to use or not, then all I have to do is go to virus total. It's a free tool. And it'll give me a 
rating which will actually tell me if this is safe for me to use or not see which url is serving this ip address so everything is here so but what then you can ask me a question what if i get a file right i can just upload a file here one second let me just do one small example okay so i upload a file right and look at the look at the reductions so there anything that so it gives me the md5 value SHA value, file type, right? And then when was this created? See, when was this file first created? First submitted, last submission, last analysis, right? So the same file was again searched three days, three years ago. See, by somebody else. So I can, I can, I can actually see if there are any comments also, right? So this is again. Virus total, and I can search anything here. I can even look for an IP address, right? So here, this is my local address. Right? If I put this IP address, it will tell me who owns this IP address, whether this IP address is clean or not. You see this? So when you get an email, any information on email it could be an IP, it could be any IP address, or it could be anything, right? You can use this website to find out more information on the particular email. Right? And there are a lot of intelligence also available here, which you can actually go through and then see. So this is one. I want one of you to tell me your email address. Don't worry. I'm not going to hack. Anyone can share your email address, please. Hey, guys, are you all there or not? Am I just talking alone? You guys are there? Hello? Sir, Kumaran, sir, can you hear me? Yes, 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 Harish. But nobody's there on the session, sir. I think uh, I request everyone to at least you can uh, put a message in the chat box. No, it's, it's not about we can hear. It's about can you respond to my questions? I just asked if one of you can share your email address. See, I'm not boring, right? I'm showing you something that we do in the industry. If you're least interested, I don't think so. I'll have to continue the session at all. If I don't see a participation, I don't see a point in continuing, right? Okay, thanks, Priya. There's a Priya madam who has given an email address. So let's see what happens. So I'm just going to... I'm using this website called haveibeenpawned.com to see how good your email address is. See? So you don't have any... Your email, uh, Priya Vishwanathan, your email was not found anywhere, right? And uh, none of your emails... Details or your accounts were hacked. So let's let's test Kumaran sir's mail ID. See, um, so there were 200 2008 data breaches. Sir Kumaran sir, do you have a Canva account? Are you using yes, Canva? Yes, yes, yes. So in May 2019, when there was a Canva attack, 
your user ID password in Canva is breached. Uh, there was another uh, PDL customer and Digimon. Are you on this Digimon spam list? Digimon, Evite, Gravatar, LinkedIn hack, Linux forums, sir. You are there in Linux forums, right? Yes, yes. So when there were a lot of breaches, your email ID was hacked there. Mm -hmm. Netlog. And then, uh, yeah, so these are the so many uh, places where uh, you can go check your email address itself, right? So any anybody else wants to give your email address? To see if your ID was hacked or something. Anyone else? Okay. So this is another way of, you know, uh, going through and to find out if any emails have got compromised somewhere or something. Okay. So that's one way. So I, I told you email address analysis. All right. Now I will explain to you one detailed case study after which I think I'll hang up and uh, for any other internal discussion you can take up with the team members. So when I was working for an organization, there was an email which was being sent to my senior directors and directors, accusing them of certain things which were not true. So when, when we got a complaint saying that somebody is sending emails of derogatory nature, we, were, we stepped into investigation. I can't show you those details because these are sensitive. I'm just telling you the case so that you can understand it more better. Okay. So, very first thing that we usually do is we first go through all the emails, right? The first step in email forensics is to completely go through the emails. Now you can ask, you, you should not ask them to delete it. You can ask them to forward a copy to you and still have one original copy in their inboxes so that, so that it is preserved as an evidence also, okay? And then, and then the second step is, is to start putting a map, right? What I call is an email map. So I usually do this this way, right? I just randomly take a notepad and I first write the ID from which the email is coming. And then I kind of do a mind map or a branching kind of stuff where I kind of mark which date an email was sent to whom, at what point in time, and what was the subject. So there are people who send emails from different IDs to same person or one email ID sends email to many people. There are two ways, right? So for example, I can just do this. So I can just do this, right? So, okay. This is how I create a map, email map. Harish, your screen is not visible. One second. Right? So this is one email. Now, if Harish has sent multiple emails, right? 
I'll just do this. Mail from Harish. So for how many other people? Yes, sent an email. That's one way. Or what will happen is, there'll be this, right? So you, instead of this, you'll have this way. So you'll have different IDs. Mail from Mar, some email ID. And then you will again have another set of, the, what you see here is there are multiple email IDs, but it is being sent to the same person. A different ways of doing things. Now, once you do this, you will have a fair idea of how many emails have come so far, who has sent email to whom, what has been the subject that they've been talking about. Now, most often what you can see is it will be related to some internal issues, some politics or the person who's being sent or the person about whom it is being spoken will have a personal enmity. So in, in, uh, in the mails that I told you in my office, there were some few names which are mentioned, right? There was, the, there was a lady called uh, Salani, whatever, right? So five, six names that we gathered. So set all those names apart and keep it with you. Now, now you start the technology evolution to understand where the mail has come from. Now, when we did this header analysis, we got the source IP. And I went and looked up the source IP. It pointed me to a browsing center in Bombay. Right? So I get the address, I get the address, right? So it pointed me to a browsing center in Bombay. And uh, when we reached out to them, they said it's a browsing center. Now, you know from what time the email has come. So there was a rule which said, you need to have ID proofs for people who are browsing. So when you went and pressed the buy, he gave us the copy of the person who sent an email and we know it was somebody internal. Because there was a guy called uh, Suresh or somebody, I'm just changing the names, who was irritated with few people teasing him. So this guy was a little psychotic guy. He was a little irritated when he was being teased by others. And then he wanted to take them for a ride. And he started sending emails um, to senior people by telling them that you have a relationship with this, so many, so many issues. So that the other person gets fired. So it's very, very critical for you to understand who has sent an email, to whom, the context, and then do a header analysis, look at the source IP, and then use tools like this to find out more information and then take the case accordingly. And there are a lot of tools today to protect the companies. Like, you know, there's something called as cloud app security, which can actually protect large companies from such phishing emails, from such email IDs, which are deemed to be unsafe. Okay. So this is about email forensics. So any questions, any doubts on social engineering and email security for you guys? Anybody, any questions? Sir, come on, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Is, uh... What can we do, sir? I think I'm done. There's no discussion also. Okay. Okay. Anything... okay. okay, Arish, I think uh, this is quite up. Uh... Thank you, Arish. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you, you are uh, very busy. Uh, uh, you have uh, another meeting by 2.30, I know that. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, time, uh, given a uh, lot of input uh, on the social engineering and uh, climate <coughs> policy. Uh, thank you very much, Arish. Uh, we'll meet again. Uh, participants, thank you all. Uh, but uh, need active participation from you all for uh, whatever may be the session. And uh, the second thing, uh, we will have another session uh, by uh, 
three thirty, not three forty-five. Uh, today we will start by three thirty. Uh, Mr. Akash uh, will continue uh, with uh, various uh, uh, kind of packing. So I request everyone to join by three thirty. <coughs> okay, and uh, for the session four. Okay. So thank you all. I will meet again by three thirty. Thank you, Arish, uh, for your time. Thank mm -hmm. you.